Well, hello, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Our next trolley stop is here, and our next trolley stop is now. Welcome back to another all-new episode of PR from the Hearts Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. To be precise, we have reached episode number 22. That is the 22nd trolley stop here at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast and PR from the Heart. Happy holidays to you and yours. We hope that all of you, your friends, your family, your loved ones, had a beautiful, blessed, and peaceful Christmas and Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and you are getting ready to close out 2022 on a very empowering note. My name is John Masalonis, the manager here at PR from the Heart. Joined each and every month, you remember him and you love him as the beloved Mr. McFeely on the long-running children's television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. We know him and we love him as David Newell. David, I hope that you enjoyed your Christmas with your wife and with your family. Now, this is the first time that you are meeting our official mascot. Remember the there he is. The family. There is little force so we so we never travel alone even more so on the book cast and i know that, that you're looking forward to this book cast because today we're going to be talking about two wonderful new children's books that are really helping children to believe in themselves to believe in a positive mindset and to believe that truly miracles can happen especially around the christmas season and leading into the start of the new year that's right Shall we start with the first book? or, or Absolutely. Do you have any more? And of course, we always like to start off first things first with some housekeeping here at PR oh, yes. from the Heart. So of course, each and every month, we are proud to pledge our support for the good folks at Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh. Now, of course, as you may know, Reading is Fundamental. And even if you don't know, that's okay. Reading is Fundamental is the largest children's literacy non-for-profit organization in the United States. They provide children's books, literacy tools, developmental resources to children that come from low-income families all across the country. As David is very kind enough to join us each and every month here on the bookcast. And of course, as Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was filmed recorded, produced, edited, and all of those good things in Pittsburgh, we pledge our support to Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh. They are the Pittsburgh affiliate of Reading is Fundamental. Each and every year, they give over 100,000 children's books to over 23,000 children in need. So we are proud, privileged, and honored to be able to pledge our support to Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh. We encourage you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars to head on over to riffpittsburgh.org slash donate as we like to say no donation is too large no donation is too small and of course each and every month here at the neighborly reviews bookcast we're hard to believe we're approaching the two-year anniversary of this wonderful program david and i we take the time to deliver as a little tip of the cap to david's character on mr rogers neighborhood mr mcfeely we deliver the newest heartfelt reviews of the newest children's books from the shining stars in the kid lit community here at PR from the heart. And David, the trolley is going to be racking up a lot of mileage because it's not a three book book cast. It's a two book book cast, but that's okay because the trolley is, is decked out. I see the Christmas lights. I hear even more bells other than the trolley bell. So we are actually head of the trolley goes, of course, as always from San Diego, where we're located here with PR from the heart across the country to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and then we head to the beautiful state of Virginia. And that is where we find the author of the brand new children's book, Gia Giordano, has shared such a tremendous new children's book entitled Yet, Y-E-T. And of course, that is published by our neighbors at Amplify Publishing. Of course, the, the good team at Mascot Kids in the process. And I know that Gina is really excited as well, David, because Yet was actually named as a finalist in the 2022 American Writing Awards. And this is how we're going to be starting off, as we always do at the top, the forefront, and the onset for episode number 22 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. Such a very important book, especially as kids are starting off the new year. Parents are helping their kids to make their own version of New Year's resolutions. It really begins and ends with reminding little ones to be able to hold on to hope and to really focus on positive thinking because that's where really anything and everything can happen. So let's dive inside the pages. 
of Gina Giordano's yet to start off episode number 22 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. Shall we? We, we, we will, but uh, before I'll just wish her good luck in her nomination and uh, then I'll proceed with uh, the book. Now I've made notes, so I'll be glad. The trusty notes are here for the notes. holidays. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's called Yep by Gina Giordano, right? That's how you pronounce her name? Gina Giordano, well, correct. The Knott family were the rulers of Negatropolis. <laughs> You get that? Negatropolis. Correct. And the evil twins can and will control citizens' lives. Everything was in honor of cannot and will not. <laughs> and many like-minded families moved to Negatropolis and started businesses and got into government. And here are some of the families that moved to Negatropolis. The M family. That's the first one, the and that made everything impossible and improbable, the M family. Then there is the Un family. They were always uninterested, unloved, uncooperative, and unhappy. <laughs> and then there's the In family, insensitive, inconsiderate, and had an abil inability, inability to change. And finally, the Ill family. They were always involved in the illegal activities and left the citizens in a dysfunctional state. So there are the families, Negatropolis. It was the negative center of the world and cannot and will not were looking to take over cities, states, and even countries. And they wanted to rule with doom and gloom. So I set up the intention here of the plot. So let's see what happens. Well, they had a, the plans to take over the top prize, which is Positivity City. Mm -hmm. And that it was the last holdout. The inhabitants were hopeful, positive, optimistic, and they had a superhero. And here comes the Yet. Yet, Y-E-T, is the superhero. Yet, held the power to change the world, but yet doubted her power because people in other cities would try new things and then they'd give up. Well, it was the last holdout. The uh, inhabitants were hopeful, positive, and optimistic. And as I said, she doubted that she could correct it. She doubted that power. The evil not-twins had citizens say negative things like, I can't, and I won't try. And the ideals of Negatropolis were asking over the world, one person at a time. They were taking over the world by infiltrating, I guess you could say, with I can't and I won't, I won't try, I can't. These were the, uh, the, the, the twins were doing this. Well. While walking in Positive City, yet saw children playing a new game. And they were laughing at their mistakes, trying to avoid making the same mistake twice. Well, they were doing what they should be doing. Out of the crowd, a voice called, I can't do this. I won't do it. It's too hard. I'm never going to learn it. Yet showed them the power of yet. In time and with practice, you will understand. One child called out, no way I'll understand. I can't and I won't. Yet had to do something. She didn't want Positive City to fall under the rule of the not twins. Here is what Yet did. She called her friends and together shared with them what was happening. And then let's see, oh, they all banded together and they fought the evil not twins. And along with the mayor of Positive City, they gathered an army of positive citizens. They started to share their ideas and thoughts through a network of other cities that were under the not rule. So in other words, they're expanding to other cities, trying to take over these uh, these evil twins. 
For instance, in Errorville, mistakes were made all the time. Yet, along with a band of believers, went to Errorville, Errorville and showed the citizens that mistakes, mistakes were actually a good thing. Hmm. What, said the citizens? Just because you make a mistake doesn't mean you need to feel like a knot. Mistakes are a way of learning. And that sort of is, sums up the book in a way. Making mistakes is a way of learning. Yet explain that if you made a mistake, figure out what you did wrong. She gave an example. Let's see. Oh, I knew what it was. She was making a cake and it didn't turn out right. If it didn't turn out right, you need to measure the ingredients correctly the next time. Yet measure it correctly, she explained. It's not that you are a knot. It's that you have yet to do it correctly. Mm -hmm. So if you make a mistake, try to correct that mistake. You're not in the wrong. You just have to learn how to do it correctly, correct. positively. Errorville citizens began to see things differently. They erased the errors, looked at what could be done differently and used yet to change the way they spoke. The evil not twins were not happy, not spoke. They learned to use the super hoop. Oh, oh, I know what I forgot. The evil not twins names were not spoken. They learned to use the superhero name of yet. So evil twins are slowly being subdued here and yet is coming up. Well, for instance, they would say, you have yet to understand and master it. Araville even changed their name to Correction City. <laughs> I love that. And their new motto was yet. Named after their superhero, yet. Correction City fought against Nagatopolis and yet. And her band of believers helped other cities change their attitudes and be more open to the concept of yet. Oh, here's in all of this. The not twins became more angry. Of course they would. They were losing some of their power and influence. They marched on Positive City. But yet, and her band of believers were ready to rebut every time the naysayer said something negative. Are you following me so far? I, I am. You are, <laughs> there's you, a lot here. You're, you're, you're you will continue, never beat us, shouted the naysayers, yet replied, I have yet to beat you, but I will. So there's the uh, confidence that's coming out and that being self-reliant cannot and will not, with all this activity, grew tired yet was always there to stop the naysayers, cannot and will not return to Negatropolis to try to regroup. But they found that the people of their city were being filled with, and this is thanks to yet, hope, optimism, and the belief that they can and they will. The not twins were losing power even more yet, yet was winning. Positivity City soon became the new capital and yet was hailed as a superhero. The citizens shouted, you saved us from the Knot Twins. You are a superhero yet. And the Knot Twins, as you might have guessed, went into hiding. And on the last page of the story, it says, from their secret hiding place, the Knot Twins continued to plot against positive thinking. And the last sentence, though, gives hope. Yet, and her band of believers fight on. And uh, on the back cover, some, there's, a, there's a little quote on the back cover. This sentence sums up the book. It is up to Yet 
to show that having a positive outlook is the best way to learn and think. Mm. And that is the uh, story of Yet, the superhero. It is, uh, it's, it's quite uh, detailed. Uh, and I, I think that maybe if you're reading the book to a younger child, you might have to stop and sort of straighten things out a little, make sure they're, they're following. I, I would say this. Go ahead, David. This is probably for a, a, an older child, maybe a second, third grade, a, a, rather than a preschoolers. I think you have to sit and you really have to talk them through it. I agree. Uh, well, um, even a team. This, the, it's children, especially just in society today, they're programmed to think negatively, right? You know, mm -hmm. what if I can't do this or I haven't done that yet? And there's just, there's so many rewarding qualities in this book. You're right. It is very detailed. But one of the things I think that it helps encourage kids to do is to be able to pay attention, right? So for yes. example, us as adults, if we want to learn to do something, uh, we have to do it several times and we might make mistakes along the way, but we have to make sure that we're paying attention, right? And then yes. obviously, you know, little ones that may have um, uh, not necessarily the longest of attention spans, so to speak. It's also just about that, that positive reinforcement, not only positive thinking, but positive reinforcement. So to be able to let your little one know, it's okay that you haven't learned how to ride your bicycle yet. It's a matter of yet you will be able to do it. It just hasn't necessarily happened. So, you know, obviously, David, and, and, go ahead. Oh, and, and the way you're sort of following that up, the, the, the not twins still were around. They weren't pushed out of the story and banned. They regrouped. And it's always there. So you, so what the, the reader is left with is yet is there to continually fight this negativity in a way. Is that, if that makes sense to you? That plus the fact that I also think that, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's awesome in many ways that, that the superhero, the main character is named yet, because again, it's uh -huh. that positive reinforcement for children. It hasn't happened Yet. yet it will happen so it's it's a very affirming word yet you know it, it's bound to happen it's going to happen it's going to take place at some point in time it just hasn't happened yet i i, I also remember there's a wonderful children's author who we had the opportunities to interview on the children's book spotlight series uh, who wrote a children's book called the magical yet and it's interesting because that word yet, I just share this because the word yet is a very magical word. You know, little ones can get very hard on themselves. Little ones want to be able to fit in. And it, it always goes back to, if I'm not mistaken, on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, when you were doing the themed weeks, I believe you actually spent a full week on making mistakes. Yes, we did. And so, you know, yourself and Fred and everyone on the program really did such a very important job in letting kids know that like, and even adults too, that making mistakes is, is a part of life. It's a matter of learning from those mistakes and then being able to get through to the other side of that where you know that you can learn to ride the bike. You can learn to, um, you can learn to change the tire on the car. You can learn to, um, you know, write cursive handwriting, whatever it is that you're trying to learn as a child or an adult. Yeah, and it doesn't happen magically either. You've got to keep no. at it. it. It takes a it takes a while to learn, and I think that is uh, brought out in in the book too. Well, the, Gina, the author, uh, was a teacher for twenty two years in public schools, and she spent six years in the classroom, and spent the last seventeen working directly with gifted children and teachers. So she's carrying on her 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 mission of yet, I suppose. And, and Molly Loach is a, is a doer. That's how you pronounce her last name. She's the illustrator, right? Correct. Molly Loach. Correct. And uh, she's a doer, it says in the, in the book, and a maker of things. She's an illustrator with a zest for life. And I think that zest comes out in her artwork. The artwork is very colorful. It's, very, it's a very zesty artwork. Uh, and her use of color and formatting the illustrations help the storyline along. So congrats to... Uh, Tomorrow. 
I also love the fact how you're making a point about the illustrations. My favorite illustration spread I wanted to share was about halfway through the book when it says in Airville, people made mistakes all the time and you have people holding up signs that say possible, hope, believe. So it's kind of interesting, David, because, you know, even though the book may necessarily, even though, let's say, a parent or a grandparent or an educator may need to read the book with a preschooler, when they see those messages, those positive signs, hope, like those are some real affirmative words that you can introduce to a little one at a very young age. Hope, optimism, never give up, expressions, words, and I, and I also love the front cover because it, it's kind of almost like when you look up at the stars in the sky at night and you see, you know, those those beautiful shining stars. And we always like to share the shining stars here, <laughs> here on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. It's a matter of, you know, I can just imagine, especially around the holidays, you know, maybe there's and this this actually ties into our second and final book that we're going to be talking about. If there is an adult that there's that is wishing for something or a child that wants one of their dreams to come true, it's just so important to take the time and remember that it hasn't happened yet. I also love how, you know, yet in many respects is more or less like has, has this childlike persona about her. So letting kids know that they are their own superheroes. You know, you have Batman and Spider-Man and... Uh, you know, for the for the girls, you have Wonder Woman, right? And, and and I remember, of course, you guys obviously came back to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood for the second run of the show during the superhero week, if I'm not mistaken. It's important to let kids know that, you know, Batman is cool and Spider-Man is cool and Wonder Woman, like, they're all great. But kids can be their own superheroes when they remember that the best things in life haven't happened yet and that they're really capable of doing anything. I think that's another important and affirming message within the story as well, too, is that kids can really do anything when they put their mind to it. They just they just can't give up in the process. That's right. It's that not giving up that leads to uh, to the learning, I, I think. Uh, not not giving up, persevering. And I, that's the, the point of the of the book, I think, or a good portion of the book. Uh, there's also a TV series, as you were mentioning the other ones, it's a positive. It's called World Word Girl, W-O-R-D Girl. Okay. And, a deal, and a, it's on public television, or it was, and deals with similar uh, topics like uh, like Yet did in a, in a different way. But I just thought I'd mention that too because it's a, an excellent program. Well, so that that is yet right that is that is yet the yet is finally happened the yet is now complete and of course we encourage all of you our listeners and viewers our friends and neighbors and of course our fellow shining stars <laughs> and of course this book is given two paws up by little forest he is a big fan of yet as well too so we encourage you to be able to head on over to amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing you can purchase your copy of Yet. You can also purchase it on Target's official website, Barnes & Noble's official website as well, too. If Amazon is your preferred online vehicle of choosing, remember that you can leave a five-star review. That's one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Gina, for Molly, to let them know that they're doing wonderful and much-needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books in the process. So again, David, the trolleys traveled from... San Diego, Pittsburgh to Virginia. Now we're headed back all across the country, back to Southern California, to be precise, Santa Clarita, California, just in, just right outside of Los Angeles, and one of one of the most beautiful children's books that's been released in 2022. We're actually excited, David, because here at PR from the Heart, we have a something we've been doing over the course of the past several years called the Top Empowering Reads of 2022. So in essence, every year, PR from the Heart releases the Top Empowering Reads for Kids. And the next book, the final book on episode number 22 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast that we're about to share, May the List, courtesy of children's author Adam Swain Ferguson and his illustrator Veronica Stanley Hooper, Love Without Wings and Adoption fairy tale 
And it, it's been such a privilege to be able to help Adam <laughs> share his story. He's been featured on ABC7 in Los Angeles. He's been featured on Good Day Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. Many other outlets across the country as well, too. And this really is a true life story in many ways. Because, because Adam and his partner, they spent two years waiting and wishing and hoping for a little one to come into their lives. They wanted to be able to adopt, but then it happened. There was a call that they had received that would change their lives forever. And the woman who would be their, their son's biological mother had chosen them to adopt a baby boy. And from there, several, you know, Adam really knew very early on that this needed to be shared in the form of not only a children's book, but a very unique and special fairy tale in the process. So let's dive inside the pages of Love Without Wings, an adoption fairy tale. So Adam sort of adapted what was going on in his real life into a, into a, a fairy tale, in a way. Right. And, uh, well, there's a quote on the back cover of the book from Amanda Kay, who's a, an adoptive parent coordinator and uh, who works alongside waiting adoptive parents. And she said she appreciates this book because it provides hope and light during a journey that can be difficult. In other words, waiting for an, to adopt is a journey. And I think sometimes it can go on for, for maybe years and you don't have an, an answer. At any rate, Adam Ferguson has uh, subtitled the book and he calls it an adoptive fairy tale, which is, which is exactly what uh, he turned his experience into. Well, and it begins as many fairy tales do with once upon a time. <laughs> we haven't had too many once upon a times, but well, starts out once upon a time, there were two kings who loved each other very much, but they longed to be parents. They dreamed of being dads and having a little prince or princess who someday uh, could take over and rule the kingdom with them. But because they were two kings, they needed a bit of magic for their dream to come true. And they called on various sages and chemists across the land. And all the potions and charms didn't seem to work. And they were broken hearted. Being resourceful, they had another plan. At night, the kings wished on every single star in the sky. Now remember, this is a fairy tale. And then one night, their wish was caught by a shooting star. As the wish fell to earth, it landed in the hands of a beautiful fairy. And as destiny would have it, she just happened to be wishing on the exact same star that the kings were, the exact same one. And that fairy had been wishing for the perfect family for a baby boy growing inside her belly. So it just seems it was destiny. They were both wishing at, in, at, the, same, at the same star. Well, the author Adam Ferguson goes on to explain that every so often, there's a fairy that is born without wings. And this fairy has an important purpose of keeping magic alive in the world of humans. The fairy knew that she wanted human parents for her baby. An extraordinary family she wanted. And the two kings were that family. She knew that right away. She wanted the family who would love and protect her baby. And she wanted her baby to, to have the help he needed to fulfill his magical callings. Meanwhile, the two kings following the shoot, shooting star's path, it led them across meadows and across rivers. And finally, it reached the edge of an enchanted forest. And this were things get uh, the, the meeting's about to happen. The king chased the shooting star's light and it led him to the roots of a great tree. And the only direction for them to go was up. 
So higher and higher they climbed, and they were guided by a shining trail of fairy dust. They they tend to have a trail of fairy dust, so they were following that. And I didn't know this, but fairies tend to live high in the treetops, according according to uh, the author. Finally, the kings met the fairy. She appeared in a flurry of pixie dust, and I can see this being animated too. The flick. <clears throat> she knew that the two kings who traveled from so far away were destined to be the daddies of her baby boy. Oh, but first, she asked the kings for their sacred oath. Here are the fairies' requests that she made of the kings. Number one, love her baby with all their hearts. Two was help him fulfill his magical purpose. And uh, let's see, three, and keep him from harm, uh, especially from trolls. But uh, then we go into that another time. This is not the time to talk about protect him from the trolls. In other words, protect him. Right. Uh, the king not only promised, or the kings not only promised, but they said they already loved him more than the sun and the moon and all the stars in the skies. When she heard their promises, she was certain that her wish had come true. She found the family. Well, some days later, sweet cries were heard all through the kingdom and all through the forest. A baby boy had been born. The kings wept for joy. They welcomed their son. And after years of waiting and wishing, their royal fam family had been completed. Well. The fairy kissed the baby's forehead and made one more wish, and here it is. The wish for the special baby was to achieve great destiny and having a lifetime filled with love. She placed her baby in the arms of the two new dads, the kings, and sprinkled pixie dust in his hair, and the pixie dust was made from the shooting star that they both were looking at it came together. I think that, that's destiny. That star brought them together. And it had powers uh, to enable the prince to visit uh, the fairy in his dreams whenever he wanted. And that's sort of a way when adoptive parents vis uh, let the children visit the uh, biological parents. That happens in adoptions today and in real life and that sort of correlates with with that well the two kings had a tearful embrace with, with the fairy and said someday they will meet again well the royal family became began their long trip home or anxious to share the news with their kingdom when they arrived home the entire kingdom was there to celebrate their new prince and the happiness he brought to his dads. The kings never forgot the fairy. They honored her by continuing to wish on stars and hoping that maybe she would hear them. Every night they would wish on every star in the sky. That's a lot of wishing, <laughs> but they did it. And they thanked the fairy for making them the family. And they would live happily ever after. That family will live happily ever after. And the king's son was filling his destiny, keeping magic alive in the world of humans with a powerful and timeless kind of enchantment that only flows through unconditional love. And here's the last sentence in the story. A love that grew stronger and stronger in the hearts of his dads with every single heartbeat of each passing day. And so the fairy, the two kings, <laughs> and the prince lived, as you would guess, happily ever after. It starts that. with once upon a time it ends with and ends with happily ever after. A true fairy tale. I. I hope I summed that up in a way that you understood it. Did you, you did it? 
you did what absolutely, is... absolutely beautiful, David. I think that you that you checked all the important points. I find it fitting that we end the year, and, and we're still not done with episode number 22 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast just yet, but I love how we're concluding the year by saying happily ever after. Because, yes. you know, you know, let's be honest, you know, 2022 is, you know, was, was a long year and there was a lot of blessings and there were some challenges that we all experienced along the way. But it's just, again, a reaffirming note to hear that phrase, happily ever after. You know, idealistically speaking, this is the holiday season. It's Hanukkah, it's Christmas, it's New Year's. It's a time where, you know what, Adam received his happily ever after in the form of his little boy with his partner. And it's just so, it's so important to be able to um, communicate this message of love, especially during the holiday season. Well, there, there's a couple things that I wanted to just mention to add on about Adam's book, is the fact that Adam's book really talks about adoption from the perspective of both the child's uh, biological and adoptive parents. And there's not necessarily many children's books that really do that when it comes to talking about adoption. Um, Adam wanted us to be able to share a quote on episode number 22 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. And he says, John and David, as an adoptive dad, I wrote Love Without Wings with hope that will encourage children to feel pride in the magic that they bring to their families' lives. And it's interesting because, you know, especially let's say if there's you know, a family that has multiple children. If you remember the Brady Bunch and you had Jan or you had Marsha, Jan and Cindy, and you know, Jan was always like, Marsha, 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 right? And so it's just so important to, to, to let each child know that they are unique, they are special, that they are loved. I really love how the book, and you had mentioned some of the, uh, some of the endorsements on the back cover of the book, but really, parents and child psychologists have really loved this book sharing the fact how it provides in a fresh it provides a refreshing look at adoption and i go back to the phrase that mr rogers shared when he was speaking in front of congress to secure the 20 million dollars worth of funding for pbs and he said senator pastori what i do is a resource of care for children and in many respects all of the books that we feature here on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, and of course, most recently now, Love Without Wings and Adoption Fairy Tale, it really is a resource of care, especially for those, I, I classify those parents as those, uh, those uh, parents-to-be, the parents who are waiting in the wings when they're wondering, is it going to happen, right? Even this kind of goes back to what we were talking about with yet. Is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? but it hasn't happened yet. If you believe that yet will become your reality and the fact that wishes and dreams can come true. Um, again, and, and I think especially with regards to fairy tales, I think it was, it might've been, I know that the, the legendary spiritual teacher and New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Wayne Dyer shared this several times, but I think it might've been, uh, it might've been Hans Christian Andersen or someone before Dr. Wayne Dyer who said, if you want your children to be smart, read them fairy tales. And there is something about just the energy of a fairy tale that is just so pleasant and uplifting, but really encouraging children to stay connected to their childlike innocence at the same point in time. <clears throat> that, that's right. And th this is a different look at adoption. And as, as uh, I see our bookcast is that we're not approaching books critically. We're not criticizing, we're exposing to what is available out there for children and families. So all the books I think we've spoken about, we're introducing Correct. Uh, the books. And, it, and I think it's up to the people who watch or hear the book cast to make their decision of Agreed. if they're interested in the book. And it's also, I'm glad that you mentioned that because again, you know, with these books being resources of care, I can only imagine, especially around the holiday season, those uh, adoptive parents to be, the parents in waiting who are wondering, again, when is this gonna happen? They can be introduced to Adam's book and they can say, wow, so Adam, he too was waiting and wishing for a long period of time. And oh wait, 
he got his miracle that came in, you know, just at the right time, just at the right moment. So we encourage all of you. And by the way, also Love Without Wings and an Adoption Fairy Tale has been given two paws up by Little Forest. He absolutely <laughs> loves the illustrations of Veronica Stanley Hooper. And I did want to mention that uh, as we begin to wind down our time, David, is, is that when someone comes to you and says, I want you to illustrate my life story, that is a beautiful gift that Veronica was given in the process. And she did such a wonderful way. She's actually one of the most talented children's illustrators in the world. And she, she did a wonderful job bringing Adam and his partner's journey to life through the form of this sweet children's book. So again, we encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars to head on over to, you can head on over to Adam's official website, which is purplefoxentertainment.com. We, we of course always include all of the links below in the copy in the description below as well too. If you feel guided to leave a five-star review for Adam, you can also take the time to do that as well. And of course, one of the things to talk about with both Yet as well as Love Without Wings we are huge proponents here at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast of local libraries and children's and independent bookstores, of course, because they're truly the pillars of our community. So especially with local libraries, we encourage you to be able to suggest to your children's librarian, your local library, to stock their copies of Yet and Love Without Wings in case they don't have the chance to do so. Because David, you know, 2023 is literally just days away, depending upon when you're watching episode number 22 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, it may already be 2023. So it's important to be able to get these resources out there right off the bat to start the new year. So again, this is Yet by Gina Giordano and Love Without Wings, an adoption fairy tale by Adam Swain Ferguson, our final two books that we are proud to, sh to showcase and spotlight on the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast episode number 2022. So, Little Forest, you know what happens when we hear the trolley. That means that it is time to go. <laughs> uh, David, it's been another magical year. And as we like to say, there are many more bookcasts on the horizon. There are many more magical trolley stops to come. I know that we're excited about 2023. Just alone in the first quarter of 2023, David, we're going to be celebrating proudly the two year anniversary of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. We were already almost on the 24th trolley stop and we encourage all of you because David and I will actually, David's going to be staying in Pittsburgh. I'm going to be traveling once again from San Diego to Pittsburgh. Little Forest, we'll see if you'll come along with me or you're going to stay out here in San Diego. But we want to uh, uh, give a nice shout out to uh, to Tara, to Andy, to Olivia, to Wayne, to the entire team at the Center for Media Innovation at Point Park University. This April, David and I will be recording not one, but two bookcasts, our April and May bookcasts. So the first part of 2023 is going to be chock full of some fun and excitement, some great times, and of course, some Fantastic, empowering reads for your little one. So, David, do you have this? Is this is the end of the year? This is a, this is the holiday season. What is it that you would like to be able to share with all of our listeners and viewers, all of all of those who have supported the bookcast or who are just new followers if they've just hopped aboard the trolley for the first yeah. time this month and and are learning what we're doing? Well, as you were talking about the various bookcasts, twenty two we've done. You say twenty two bookcasts, David. Hard. You know, to I was just. I was just thinking in the holidays, the holidays have, have been, we've been through the holidays, but you know, you could go back and look at some of those. They're available to be seen, right? Those book casts. Yep. You can, and you the, can, the, you the, can. The books we've talked about over the years, over the two oh, years. Almost, over the years. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many good books and there's a good suggestions for various, you know, some are preschoolers, some are for older kids. But there's a potpourri of books there that you may want to uh, consider as gifts. Or, you know, what some people do is they buy books in a bookstore, uh, maybe 10 or 20, and donate them to their local library, uh, which is a very good idea. And so somebody might get the idea, take a look at the back the backlog of book casts, and maybe there are some books you can buy for a birthday or a present or 
some sort of gift. That I love that. That's what I was thinking as you were talking about the many bookcasts we've done. I love so, I love the phrase. That. I love the phrase "pulpery of bookcasts." And yes, as David mentioned, you can visit our official website if you are already not there, which is prfromtheheart.com. You can also stay connected by subscribing. Of course, one of the many ways if this bookcast has already uplifted your spirits if it's brought more love and joy into your life this holiday season as we look ahead to 2023 if anything you now know that the power of positive thinking is the way that by believing in yourself the magic and miracles can happen and the importance of reminding our children of this very same thing for them one of the many ways that you can pledge your support if we didn't have the chance to mention it at the very beginning of the bookcast you can, of course, subscribe to PR from the Heart's YouTube channel and share this very special trolley stop that has been episode number 22 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. And again, you can enjoy all of the previous bookcasts, all 21 of them, because there are literally dozens of children's books that are available at your fingertips that can make the perfect gift for your little one to be able to start the new year. So if you are a children's author and would like for David and I to be able to share and review your brand new heartfelt children's book on a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast here at PR from the Heart in 2023, we encourage you to head on over to our official website, which once again is prfromtheheart.com or connect with us via any of our social media platforms that you now see on screen. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at PR from the Heart. And for more details, because we have such a big and banner year in store for children, parents, families, educators all around the world. If you are a children's author and are interested in more information on how we can be of service to you in the new year to be able to create and facilitate and promote your very own book media tour in a city or cities of your choosing to facilitate a featured television interview or a couple of featured television interviews. For more information on our children's book Spotlight Series, which is now probably one of the longest running video podcasts in the Kidlit community, where we interview the top award-winning and best-selling children's authors and illustrators in the world of children's literature, you can schedule your courtesy connection call. And of course, again, let us know how we can be of service to you in the new year. And of course, raise your hand if you have had fun, by the way, on episode number 22 of the Neighborly Reviews yeah. bookcast. <laughs> we know that you can't raise your hands, little force, but you can definitely lift your paws up <laughs> and share that you have had such a wonderful time. So yes, this is officially how we close 2022 on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. Uh, I want to take the time right now as well to thank all of those who are behind the scenes here at PR From The Heart. Our, our wonderful team, our virtual assistant Ling and her team, Venus and Melissa. You may not necessarily know of them by name, but it really takes a village here at PR From The Heart. So all of those that help us in the process to be able to get the word out on the bookcast, because without them, there would be no us. Whether it be editing, uh, post-production, promotional graphics, website updates. Uh, it, it's really important that we work with the with those who truly have a connection with little ones and truly have the the intentions in mind to make the world a better place for not only children, but parents, families, educators, and to bring more of them across the country and around the world together in the process. So there are many more magical trolley stops in 2023. So of course, before we leave, we want to give a little tip of the cap to one of our favorite neighbors. Of course, David spent many a years with him, many a decades with him on the long running children's television program, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Uh, Mr. Rogers, I, I believe that in, in maybe in a past life, he might he may have met Ponce de Leon because of course, <laughs> when you think of Ponce de Leon, you think of the fountain of youth. Well, I say this because Somehow, Mr. Rogers weighed 143 pounds for his entire natural adult life. Maybe it was because of the swimming that he did each and every morning in the process, but he had a very special connection with the numbers one, four, three. There's one letter in I, four letters in love, and three letters in you. As a little tip of the cap to Mr. Rogers and, of course, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, and as David is kind enough to join us each and every month on the bookcast, we remind all of you of our favorite numbers, which are two, four, three. Because there is two letters in we, four letters in love, three letters in you. We remind all of you. And Little Forest does as well, too. The newest edition here at PR from the heart. 
we remind all of you that you are perfect, you are whole, you are healthy, you are complete, that you are special just the way that you are, that we like you, that we love you just the way that you are. So again, one final time, the brand new children's books, they are now available yet by Gina Giordano, courtesy of our neighbors at the Amplify Publishing Group at Mascot Kids and Love Without Wings, an adoption fairy tale written beautifully by Adam Swain Ferguson. Again, we have included the links below in the description below on how you can purchase your copies of Yet and Love Without Wings, because of course that is just one of the many ways you can pledge your support for Gina, for Adam, and of course for their illustrators, uh, as well as um, Holly and, and Veronica, their illustrators, to let them know, Molly, I should say, Molly and Veronica, to let them know that they are doing, again, wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. Little Forest, you have gotten big in the past month that, since you have been here with us at PR From the Heart. Needless to say, we want to thank all of you for your continued support of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, for your continued support of PR From the Heart and the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, for your continued support of children's authors and illustrators, specifically speaking and going beyond Gina, in addition to Molly, Adam and Veronica, again, because they are doing, we say it once, we say it twice, we say it thrice, wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. We want to thank you for your continued support of local libraries and children's and independent bookstores, truly the pillars of our community. And above all else, we want to thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world. And of course, I think we're hearing maybe the, maybe we're hearing a little bit of Frank Sinatra in the background. Auld Lang Syne, should old acquaintance be forgot and days of Auld Lang Syne. So we hope that all of you close out your 2022 on an empowering note. For David Newell, for myself, John Massalonis, we hope that all of you enjoy the rest of the holiday season with you and your loved ones. But fear not, there are many more magical trolley stops to come in 2023. Let's make it the best year ever for not only ourselves, but also for the children of the world. So again, for David Newell, for myself, John Massalonis, thank you for spending some quality time with us here in our neighborhood. In addition to Little Forest as well, he'll be back with us for more trolley stops to come in the new year. But again, thank you for helping us to walk home. The children of the world, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Goodbye for now. You want to wave bye, little forest? Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>